Welcome back. Mitchell Forgey joining us from Redbeard Roasters this afternoon. How are you? Uh, excellent. Yeah, it's Good. almost Christmas and all that. And so you, I dress like a candy cane. You did. I like that. I enjoy that enthusiasm. Thank you for that today. <laughs> are you all ready for Christmas? Ah, uh, yeah. My wife does really good Christmas shopping, so she's Aren't taking lucky. care of everything. I would like a wife as well. <laughs> <laughs> we are taste testing a few things today, though. We've got a cider and a beer. Is this a beer? Yeah. Yeah. You know what's interesting is that these bottles look fairly similar, but one's a cider. This, you know, to me from the back, this looks like a beer. But um, is this the way of it with the uh, ciders? They're starting to look a little bit more manly somehow. Well, I guess so. I mean, the craft cider movement has been kind of. I don't know, following in the footsteps of the craft beer movement now. Um, this one is from Washington State. And uh, yeah, I mean, everybody's kind of bottling it everywhere from 500 milliliter bottles, which are the kind of like classic English uh, bottle size, to this is, I believe, 600 mils, mm -hmm. uh, which is from Quebec. The classic BC size is the 650 mil for the craft beers. Then Belgian breweries are doing 750 mils and 1.14 liters. So they're and getting big. So anyway, it's kind of going all over the place. But the, the concept behind it is like with anything that you're drinking, you know, it's meant to be shared, not mm -hmm. necessarily meant to be drank by yourself. And mm -hmm. so I think that that's the motivation behind the larger bottles. Fantastic. We're going to try these, obviously. But we also want to talk about the location of where you guys are in the North Shore. Because sometimes people ask you, where are you guys again? Where are you? Yeah, uh, you know, we've had a number of people um, kind of coming in. So there we are. Uh, taken yesterday, we got brand new lights on the outside of the building, and mm -hmm. in January we're going to have a sign. So we're really growing up in the world, um, you know, getting older and more mature. And you that's know, a nice all entrance that. way. What do you call that wooden uh, piece there? Like a pergola, almost. Uh, but yeah, not. that's exactly. It's a uh, pergola, it and uh, my friend uh, Nick at Valley View Industries built that. And interestingly, I was going to comment on it last time. Last time I was here, the parks people were here right before, and one of his gazebos was their like closing shot of the parks. So <laughs> anyways, he's getting his handiwork all over the midday show apparently right now. That's fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. And just to put this in perspective, this is right across the street. What's on this side of the street over here? Uh, Total Pet is there. there you go. Um, Camloose Immigrant Services is there. Uh, across the street is Donut King. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we've been uh, kind of occupying a great little spot in the North Shore. Yeah, and I highly recommend people come and check you out. You have a very cozy inside. You feel like you can just sit down and have a beer, have a coffee, have something to eat. It's very warm and, and very nice in there. Yeah, when Simon yeah. was by taking that video yesterday, he said, you know, I really like being here because it's very casual. You yes. know, like I don't feel like I have to make any large commitment. And that's exactly what we're going for, a community yes. center. Community center, yeah. fantastic. So without further ado, should we give these a try? Do you yeah, think? so I sure. brought the beer and we'll do that first. Um, this is the McTavish in Memoriam. It's from Le Trou du Diable. Uh, it's a bit of a leftover from the tap takeover we just did. Mm. Um, our tap takeover events are where we invite other breweries to come and take over all of our beer taps, and they bring their brewer, and they can kind of talk to us a little bit about you know, what it is they do and why they do it. And uh, you know, it's kind of a great opportunity for the guests to sort of interact you know, kind of go to a brewery that's somewhere else that we couldn't, mm -hmm. you know, easily go to. Was it a good turnout? Yeah, it was, uh, it was probably one of the lower turnout ones that we've had, which was okay because it was cold outside and that was that day that was minus 16 or whatever. So anyways, uh, you know, it was good there weren't people waiting outside or anything mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, awesome artwork on it. This is supposed to be an English style IPA that's brewed in Quebec with American hops. So mm. apparently it's, they don't know what it is. I know what it is. <laughs> Delicious. A little bit of a bitter aftertaste there, but nice. There's some fruity t flavors in there. Yeah, and that's the IPA nature of it. So the India Pale Ale, mm -hmm. they discovered that hops were a preservative for beer. Okay. And so when they were shipping beer uh, from the English to their you know, colony in India, uh, it was quite a long journey around the Horn of Africa at the time. There wasn't a Suez Canal. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they packed the beer full of hops to preserve it on its journey. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the kind of namesake of the beer style comes from. At this point, it's been changed quite radically to mean all kinds of things, but that bitterness is coming from the hops, so. It's nice, it's yeah. good. Excellent, okay, and then this one. And then we have, uh, this is the Finn River, uh, Olympic Peninsula, Washington. This is their uh, seasonal botanical series, so it's their kind of like limited release series. Uh, this one is done with lavender and black currant. We have another one uh, in the bar right now, which is, uh, it's called Fire Barrel, and it's a, uh, bourbon barrel aged cider. And so that's something that's quite common now in beer and in cider where people are 
barrel aging their beers and ciders to kind of bring mm -hmm. on some of the characteristics of either the barrels that they were in mm -hmm. or to kind of mellow out the beer because it's aging and something that's kind of semi-porous over time. Mm -hmm. So, Do you yeah. find it hard to make these selections? There's so many things to choose from. And look at this, there's a lot of carbonation in this. But hard to make the choices, right? Well, I, I, the first time I was here, I said, you know, why did I do this? Well, it's because I really wanted to drink all these things. And so when you have to order large amounts of them, I can't mm -hmm. do it all by myself. So yes. I figured, well, you know, now I can share it with everybody else. Okay, well, let's, so. uh, we're almost out of time. We'll give this a sip here. Cheers, happy Friday. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Wow. I don't, I'm not sure I've ever had anything that has a, that lavender aftertaste before. It's quite good though. Yeah. Uh, I think I wondered if they had the idea from like lavender iced tea because that's something right. that was kind of popular right, last yeah. summer. It's good though. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it has that same kind of um, slightly tannic lavender flavor and yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you for being here today. Another couple of great suggestions. It's always lovely to have you on the show. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Yes. If you would like to try out things, uh, uh, one of these drinks or anything else at Redbeard Roasters, you can find them at 449 Tronquille. And the information as well is on the screen. We are back with Fisherman's Market in 90 seconds. Stay with us. Thank you.